If he proves reckless and cruel and wild, my moral obligations at its end, and it would seem in me a kind of mercy to re-imprison him. Not punishment, but justice. 10,000 Things brings theater to audiences who don't usually go. So we perform Shakespeare and Brecht and Greek tragedies, but we do it for audiences in prisons and homeless shelters, people who usually are seeing theater for the first time, many of whom live their lives at the same extremes as the characters in the plays we're doing. And I think we keep doing it because they make us better artists. We perform for the general public as well, and um, we have a very devoted following of people who have seen lots of theater, um, but they love coming to what we do because it's so immediate and intimate and someone said it's kind of like mainlining theater. My soul cries out for vengeance! But I see my victory must be my own surrender. I kneel and offer you my neck to tread upon. It actually started when I was living in LA and I wanted to do a Brecht play. The play is about a prostitute who gets a bag of gold from the gods, and it's about um, her struggles to kind of help out all her poor friends but stay financially solvent herself. And we thought, well, people without very much money would probably really appreciate this story, but it's very hard to get them to come into a theater. So we found a homeless shelter, and we set up a little set we built on clothesline. You could just hang it on a clothesline and about 30 people finally gathered around and they were very skeptical. But once we started doing the play and they got that we weren't there to preach to them, we weren't being condescending, we weren't trying to tell them how to live their lives, we were just trying to tell the story as best we could, they opened up their hearts and they just started shouting things out, like ad advice to the characters like, honey, watch out for him, he's bad news. Um, and they were just so open and honest in their responses to the play. I'd never experienced that kind of exchange. I mean, they knew more about the world of the play than we did, for sure. But we had our skills as artists and to bring to them, and it was just this amazing exchange, and it kind of got me hooked. I had hoped to find a new, wise, prudent man, triumphing over destiny and the stars. Instead, I find a brutal murderer. I don't think I've ever seen Michelle actually angry, but if you want to get her agitated, call 10,000 Things Social Work Theater, because it's not. I think that the impulse to want to bring theater to those audiences comes from a really honest place, and it doesn't have anything to do with noblesse oblige. What it has to do with is these people have had life experiences that are going to be really resonant with the characters in the play. And that makes the play more important and deeper for the audience. And that in turn makes the play deeper and more important for the actors. And what happens to the play in between is that the play breathes in a way that it might not have breathed for 400 years. I do not want your love or your embraces. You are cruel father. You've kept me away from you and reared me like a beast. You have denied my human dignity, so I feel nothing for you, Father, nothing. Is that the thanks I get for making a poor prisoner a prince? What have you given me that was not mine? I think theater thrives with very little stuff. I mean, we're called 10,000 Things, but we actually use very few. We have very little in terms of set or props, and um, I think audiences love being asked to fill in the empty spaces with their imagination. You are not a horse! You're a hippogriff! Why have you thrown me? One of the things I love is that we don't have lights. 
you can't, you know, we just have the fluorescent lights in the room. We, there's no dark house. The actors can see the audience, which they never get to do. And the audience, of course, can see the actors. And then the audience can also watch each other during the show. And it takes away a lot of barriers and it ups the intensity of what's happening. And I think theater is wonderful that way. Well, since we don't have set, lights, costumes, much props, you've got to have great actors. And you have to have actors that know how to plummet the depths of a script. Actors who work at the Guthrie, who work at the Children's Theater, who work out of town, will choose to work for 10,000 things. And they'll choose to work for 10,000 things because the quality of the product is so consistently high. You know, you don't have all the support from, say, sound reinforcement and beautiful sets and, you know, so it, it really challenges you uh, as far as your craft to go deeper. Right now, we're actually doing a classical drama called Life's a Dream. It's a 17th century Spanish play by Calderon. It's a wonderful fairy tale about a prince who, when he's born, the stars predict that he's going to grow up to be a monster and a tyrant. So his father, the king, has him shut away, brought up in a dark tower, and it asks the question, what can you do if the stars or your parents or society has predicted you're going to grow up to be a failure? Is there anything you can do about that? Um, and it's proved to be really resonant. The role that the prince had went down, it kind of symbolizes the role that I went down and the role that I'm trying to change, actually. Thought a lot about myself, in a way. Uh, how he said he was untamed, I thought he was a lion, he was a beast, and uh, a new output came on upon him. Just, just the storyline, you know, it makes me think like, okay, well, maybe I can change, you know, because deep inside everybody is a king or a queen. There was a janitor at a homeless shelter who said, thank you for treating us like we have brains in our heads, which I've always taken to heart. I mean, to me, it's fundamental to respect the intelligence of our audience members. We try to respect their intelligence, their imagination, and their life experience, and that's a very rare commodity in many people's lives. That's in some ways as valuable to them as food or shelter in certain moments. So when we get a sense that we've made a connection that way, it's, there's nothing better. There really isn't. Do I surprise you? Do not be amazed. Is it a wonder that a dream has taught me a little wisdom? I should fear to wake and find myself once more prisoner? And yet, even if that time never arrives, I believe now that all human lives are just like dreams. Remember, as you each pass on your way, our actors, our musician, and our play. Minnesota Original is made possible by the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, and the citizens of Minnesota. Music